Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosen here. So I've just finished um, upgrading my home network for a backup internet on 4G cellular uh, network. So I'm really, really excited about this. I have been having for a long time sort of problems with getting good internet connectivity where I'm based, albeit in Jerusalem, the, the capital of the high-tech nation, startup nation. Um, so I did a video about 10 days ago in which I explained how to set up one of TP-Link's 4G routers. That's the uh, TLMR100. Mostly I do, I really regret not getting a router now with multiple LAN ports because um, I ended up not using it with a load balancing router and instead just connecting this into my, connecting my, my ISP router into this router. And now because I didn't have more enough LAN ports, LAN ports I had to put a switch onto that as well. So that probably could have been avoided, but um, I'll have the load balancing router for my next backup internet project. So um, I'm just gonna explain basically what I've done and why you might want to do this and how to do this if you have the TP-Link, one of the TP-Links, one of the TP-Link uh, 4G routers or cellular routers, because they should work more or less the same. Now, um, there are other ways to achieve 4G uh, cellular backup. Now, it depends who you get your internet from. For instance, with my provider, they do have, there is a USB slot on the, um, on the router they give you and you can put in a dongle there, a 4G dongle, and that should work. I personally w always want and always wanted to own my own hardware, not to have to rely upon the, the hardware that my ISP gives me. And I am kind of stuck with using their router because they don't really provide support without it. So I'm kind of tied in that respect, but I wanted to build everything, I, everything else in my network without using the uh, hardware from them. So I'm, I just set up a schematic and I'm just gonna bring this guy over and you can see what I've done here. So I have an ISP router and um, what I've done is, th this, this, was, this was the second network design. Um, so let me actually just show you firstly, this is what I've called dream network. So this is what I was planning on doing at first. I was gonna have a 4, this 4G router from TP-Link um, alongside a um, ISP router and then putting that into a load balancing router. You can also get one made by TP-Link and then um, and then connecting my um, um, Ethernet devices, um, my computer, my NAS and also uh, potentially putting a router on the end of that load balancer to get Wi-Fi throughout the, throughout the house. Now that was kind of an elaborate setup admittedly and it was going to involve one, two, three, four routers, which was kind of a lot of routers in a home. So uh, this is just kind of a little bit pared down, uh, the one that I currently have going, but it's, uh, it's, it's a simpler configuration. So if you wanna do this, you're only, need, you're only going to need to pick up uh, one additional router. So that's, two routers are, are gonna be in the house, ISP and TP-Link, but two is obviously less than four. So it's a little bit simpler to configure. So what I've done here is I have put the ISP router into the TP-Link um, into its WAN port. And I'm gonna show the settings you need to change if you want to use your TP-Link cellular router in this manner. Um, and then that that will, I'm, I've turned off the Wi-Fi network on my ISP router and I'm using now the Wi-Fi network. That's going to be the Wi-Fi network for my house. I don't use Wi-Fi for the most part, but uh, my wife does. So it was important that there was a Wi-Fi network that was up and usable. Um, and I'm gonna be connecting through the ethernet um, through this stuff down here. But, um, so the TP-Link is going to do backup and I'll, I'll just show in the screenshots what to do. And that means that in the first instance, it's going to use the connection from the ISP. So your DSL, whatever your ISP is, um, that's gonna be the primary connectivity. And the TP-Link router will switch over to cellular only as a backup. So it's basically, kind of flipping this router on its head instead of making this router a 4G router, um, it's making it a backup router essentially. And um, it's really handy that that can be changed pretty easily. Now the default changeover when you go into wireless mode is not 4G backup I believe, it's going to be the other way around, 4G primary and ISP backup. So I needed to also change one more setting there. So two setting changes and now everything's hooked up. So this Wi-Fi network 
instead of being a Wi-Fi network just from the ISP, it's a Wi-Fi network that um, has fallback or backup internet built into it. It's going to be prior, primarily the an, a Wi-Fi network created from the ISP connectivity, but in the event that that drops, it's going to switch over to cellular con cellular based connectivity. And then the, the rest of the network is going out through. So the, the TP, the TLMR100 is a pretty, it's kind of the most basic device um, that they have. And it's got a, um, it's just got a, sorry, I've just done something here. Um, it's just got one WAN port and one LAN port. So that's the one port, one port taken up by the ISP and one LAN port. And as I said, I should have probably gone for a higher end uh, TP-Link router. So I've put a switch here and then the switch is powering a couple of things in my office. And then the second switch is going to be doing the NAS and my home media center. So that is the network architecture that I have rigged up over here. Now let me show you how that um, actually looks in, uh, in, real, in, in real life. It's not quite as, um, it's not quite as uh, neat and glamorous as that makes it look. So on the bottom you have here my ISP router. Now I've actually since moved this about. This was when I was setting it up. So I have done some cable management since and uh, optimized things. But this is, the, the one on the bottom is a router from the ISP. Uh, the On the bottom left, that gray cable is the RJ11. So that's the input for the router. This cable where that I've labeled LAN to WAN. So I'm running a, LAN cable out of the ISP router into the WAN port on the TP link and um, and that's basically it and then you've got the SIM card sitting in the SIM card tray with the antennas and the LAN port is that's going off to a switch now that's I've actually kind of changed this the 4G router is now in another room and the router is it's been brought back into my home office but basically the networking is the same so that is how it looks rigged up as such. Um, now I wanted to show you guys what you're going to need to change in the um, in the in the TP-Link admin uh, console. So the first thing is you're going to need to change the router mode into. You're going to need to change the operation mode. So log into your TP-Link and click on Advanced up the top. And then you have one setting called operation mode. And this is the setting that will turn the router on its head, essentially. And um, I've gone from three or 4G router mode, which is intended to just broadcast your, your 4G router to wireless router mode that is going to be intended for this use case in which the uh, this TP-Link device receives internet from an ISP router um, and then primarily passes on that to other devices and creates a Wi-Fi network of that. And the three, three, four G aspect is only, is only there as a backup. So that's number one. Second thing is, um, if you go into network and then click on internet, there's a internet backup switch. Now this is all kind of inspired from the uh, documentation of TP-Link, which is available from their TP-Link website. Uh, and this covers all this. So go into advanced, click on internet, then you see internet backup. Now this is, the first one is flipping it, flipping the router on its head in the first way, and this is flipping the backup on its head. So you want, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if this is the use case or the setup you're aiming for, you want the, for, the cellular to be the backup and the ISP to be primary. So enable this switch. Um, I can't think of a reason why you would want it the other way around, like cellular being primary and backup on the ISP, but I'd imagine the vast majority of people switching into wireless wireless router mode, or at least definitely those looking to use this for the, the 4G as a backup are going to want to go into this uh, 3, 4G backup there. Um, and that is mostly it. I did have to do one more thing. I'm just gonna move this guy across now. Because I had another router, uh, the ISP router was also living on the network. There was a clash between the IP addresses of the embedded web servers of the TP-Link router and my ISP router. They were both on um, the same address. So if you go into network and click on LAN settings, if you <coughs> just um, check whatever the default IP address is of the TP-Link router, I think it's 192.168.0.1. <coughs> and if your ISP router is also on that address, then you're going to want to change the TP-Link router, just move it to another address on the network. So I went for, I just moved it to a different IP. 
and you can also enable a second IP. I didn't do that because the first one got rid of the problem essentially. And um, that is essentially all that I did. Now it did take me a few sort of hours to um, figure out all these steps, but um, if you're trying to do this, then that should, that should save you a, a bit of time. So that's basically what it is. And in, in summary, you are wiring your um, ISP router or I, I have now wired my ISP's router into the WAN port um, of the TP-Link cellular router. There is a SIM card in there. There are SIM card, there is cellular antennas. Um, and now there is, so now there's 4G and ISP coming into the TP-Link. And uh, the TP-Link is now in the operation mode of, of router, which means that it's going to primarily be acting as a uh, router for the ISP connection but because it's got that 4G infrastructure in it, it's able to automatically back up uh, to that in the event that the uh, primary drops. So that's going to be backup internet. And uh, I, the way I did it, uh, you could do it differently. If you go for a higher, link, higher end TP-Link router with a bunch of LAN ports, you might have enough. Um, I personally threw a switch out at the end of that, um, of that little TP-Link router and wired all my ethernet uh, devices, my NAS, my computer, uh, my media center, everything now is wired on the, local, on the one LAN port on the TP-Link because that LAN port benefits from both uh, the primary and the backup connectivity. And finally, I took down the Wi-Fi network on the um, ISP router and I put up the Wi-Fi network on the, um, on the TP-Link router and I did that because I don't see, I don't think there would be any point in having Wi-Fi on the ISP router because that doesn't have the cellular backup built into it. So therefore I didn't see the, the point in confusing things and running unnecessary extra Wi-Fi network. So just to keep things clean on the network, I uh, took down the Wi-Fi network on the ISP, put it up on the TP-Link and now I have a Wi-Fi network in my house as well as an ethernet network and both of those will have a combination of ISP connectivity and cellular backup. Um, and why is this good? Because um, internet goes down, even good ISPs tend to go down for a while. And now when that happens, and this has been happening a lot for me um, over the past year, I would say, and we, we initially bought another ISP and had two ISPs, and that's definitely another way to do backup internet. Um, that's why I bought the load balancer, because just to, if I want to do that option, but um, I feel like this is almost a simpler option, option and the, the advantage of using cellular as a backup as opposed to another ISP is that commonly I found, now where I live in Israel, there's basically two types of infrastructure. What I found is that the two ISPs tended to go down simultaneously or quite close, to, quite close together in time. So therefore I thought that doing ISP plus cellular would be a better backup system than, uh, than using two ISPs. Now, this network architecture I've described wouldn't work, for, um, wouldn't work for two ISPs. If you wanted to do go the whole shebang, uh, I still think this would have been a pretty decent network architecture. Getting your ISP router plus your 4G router plus a second, um, second ISP, putting all that gear into a load balancing router such as a TP-Link R470T, there is a bunch of different, um, there's a bunch of different load balancing routers on the market. Um, and that's actually kind of the, the older one, it's just the one that's available where I live. Um, that would be like next level. Um, another thing that would be next level or a simplification on this would be to go for a router that has dual one, um, dual, wide area network uh, ports and LTE. And I found a couple, thanks to, thanks to the help of um, a couple of people on the home networking Reddit. So um, you could have, that would bring you down to just two routers. Um, you'd have your, um, actually I'm not sure that would be better necessarily, but it would be a little, little bit tidier. You'd have um, a router which would have your SIM card plus uh, one ports for let's say your two ISPs, but you still need two plus that You'd cut down on the 4G router you'd cut down on one one router because there'd be a sim card slot in the router So there are different ways to skin a cat and different ways to do backup connectivity in a home network environment I would say that for my I wouldn't say 
budget constrained, but some of these high end writer cut high high end writers, like the ones I described with, you know, two WAN ports plus an LTE writer cost like six, seven hundred dollars. And I did not have that kind of money to uh, play around with on this. I just wanted something that would basically give me backup connectivity. Um, in terms of how much this thing did cost, the way I've done it, um, if I can get the right schematic up again, costs associated with this design, the TP-Link was like $70. This I went for the most basic 4G writer with Ethernet. I'm glad I did because if it didn't have Ethernet, um, I wouldn't have been able to do this configuration. Um, so that was about 70 bucks. It's about, mm, I'm trying to think in dollars for the, for the data sim. I don't know, 20, $30 a month, um, I think, something like that for a data only SIM card that lives in the, lives in the cellular router, the four, that's 4G. Um, so that's a recurring cost and that's basically it. So you're talking about an added cost here of a once off payment of about, let's say $7,100 for a 4G router and 20 to $30 per month. And you have now got yourself, bought yourself with that extra spend over your baseline cost for your ISP connection, you've bought yourself backup internet connectivity that when your if and when your ISP goes down, the router will switch over. And the way I've designed this network here, um, whatever you have on the network, your LAN devices, your wireless, everything will benefit from that uh, failover or should benefit from it. And therefore you'll be able to get less internet interruptions. And um, I think if you're running a business from home as I am, uh, as my wife is, um, you know, I don't think you need to go for the thousand dollar setups. I think if you have the money, if you're a, you know, 50 person, 100, 100 person business uh, in the critical infrastructure sector, by all means, I'm sure they, they go in for the top end gear. But I think as a basic way, basic and affordable way to give yourself backup internet, I think that this, I'm, I'm, I'm virtually 100% certain uh, this will pay for itself because even in the last few months I've been, um, I was on like, podcast that I had to uh, just abort because my internet dropped and you're trying to like rig up a hotspot and it's very amateur. So this thing, you don't need to worry about that. There is data, there's cellular data and there's ISP. It's in the same router. There's a device that's going to run all that failover for you. And I think it's a pretty cool thing to do. So I uh, hope this was useful. And if you'd like to get more, more videos from me, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.